Okay, well, uh, this video is going to be a little bit different than some of the ones, most of the ones I've been doing. Uh, as I promised in one of my other videos, it's going to be a, one about edible plants. And uh, this is actually a really good reference book to uh, refer to when it comes to different wild edible plants. Peterson's Field Guides. They, they also make books about um, bird identification, reptiles, all kinds of other stuff. Um, and even you can see right here on the cover, uh, day lilies. You can eat them. The flowers are edible, usually when they're uh, just about to open before they do open. Um, wild blueberries. I actually have a wild blueberry bush right there. That's what that is uh, in my yard here. And uh, I'll show you those after too. Also, things like dandelions. People don't, a lot of people don't realize because they get such a, a bad rep as a uh, nuisance plant, but actually they're supposed to be really good for you, it's just that people don't want to see them in the grass. But, so I'll get started, see what I can find around my yard for uh, different wild edible plants. I'll start off with the, the blueberry bush over here though. Now this one's kind of hard to misidentify, the only other plant around here that pretty much looks like it is uh, mountain laurels but they don't produce any berries they just have flowers and then the flowers fall off I guess they they do get sort of a, a berry kind of thing it's uh... It, it's more like a, a little green ball with a, a spoke sticking out of it though but right here you can tell see the way the the bark is in there this is what the bark on a on a blueberry looks like sort of uh, flaky comes off. Mountain laurels are almost the same as that too. Even the leaves. The leaves are the, really close to mountain laurels. But this this is not a store-bought blueberry plant. This is just one from the woods that happened to be sprouting up here and we bought the house and I, uh, I pruned it to a small bush. But right here you can see uh, yeah, right there. Here's one of the edible blueberries on it. They're, I mean, blueberries are blueberries. They're easy to tell. They, they got that little uh, star-shaped front to them. And uh, they're actually really good. But that's one source of food that tastes really good. Uh, I'll show you a couple others now. Here's another one. Uh, just grows wild in the yard here. You can see the see the trunk here. It's almost got like a bluish haze to it. If you saw this right here, you'd think it was a raspberry bush, but actually it's some form of, of blackberry. Once they get a little riper, the uh, the berries go black. Let's see here. This is a they have three leaves, two of them together, you can see they are two together, this one's separate, you can tell from the back side a little easier. Uh, the edges are toothed, they have the spikes going up them. Underside is a really uh, lighter color compared to the upper side. And uh, this is one that, I mean, there's other plants that look like it, but raspberries are pretty distinctive. And again, this isn't something that I planted out here. It's just something that grows wild. Um, one of my neighbors has a, a clump of them out in their, their woods, too. Same thing. But they, once they get going, they, they really kick in and fill in an area. If you see uh, my... Uh, wood pile or compost pile back here. It started off with with just these couple of plants here. Now they're uh, they're all over up the hill right there all up in there all the way up to the top of the hill here. Yeah so and that was only in about two years they fill in quick. But that's another kind of edible plant. Now this is, a, this is a mountain laurel right here, and you can see the bark is similar to that of a, uh, 
of a blueberry bush. It's got that flaky bark. It's a little bit deeper grooves on the, the mountain laurels here. And also, I mean, there's a bunch of differences. They, they are very similar, but if you look here, this is gone to seed. Now, there's no way you'd mistake that for a blueberry. Here's what they look like. This is the seed pods. The, the flowers actually uh, fall off, and then they turn into these seed pods that open up and drop the seeds out. I mean, that doesn't look anything like a blueberry. You, I'm sure someone would not see that. Like, oh, look, blueberries and eat that, but... This is uh, another plant that's closer to the blueberry bush. And um, the leaves on a mountain laurel, they're thicker. You can almost see the thickness of that leaf there. And they're waxy. They have like a waxy coating to them. But that's just a few of the differences. So mountain laurels, no, you can't eat. The blueberries, you can. Well, this here, this is a patch... Um, of immature wild cucumber root. It's got the uh, the whirl of leaves here with the main, as you can see there, it's got the main st uh, stem going down each leaf, the main vein. Um, these ones, as I said, they're not mature. They probably won't be ready to eat until next year because they're already starting to drop their leaves. That's why they have that dark color on them. They're getting overripe, I guess you'd say. There should be uh, a second whirl coming out of here, another stalk coming up, second smaller whirl, and then uh, a three-flowered um, little spokes with uh, flowers on them, three of them. And then uh, down at the base down here, right down there, you follow that down and you get to the, uh, get to the root part, the edible part. Uh, those ones are probably one of my favorites as far as taste and uh, if you find a nice size clump of them uh, it's not that much work to gather them up just get yourself a small stick uh, take your pocket knife or something cut a shovel like edge onto the edge of the stick just make an angle a pointed angle on the stick and you can use that as a digging stick to get it all out without dulling your knife you should never most most outdoorsmen know this, but some people don't realize you should never dig with your knife. It, it's not made for that. It's meant for cutting. And if you do that, you could dull it up really quick. And that's the last thing you want to do when you're outdoors. So if you can use another tool, use the knife to make another tool that you can dig with that it doesn't matter if it dulls up. Uh, and then just, it's, it's biodegradable. You just toss it when you're done. And, uh, yeah, I mean, if you can see here, this whole area, all... All those down there, those are all immature Indian cucumber roots right there. Um, if I can find a mature one, I'm going to dig it up and show you what that looks like. And there's also in my yard, uh, this is the back of my property, in my yard there's also uh, the other kind that looks similar to it that you cannot eat, so I'll show that one too should be able to see the differences but so I lucked out um this is a mature one here there's the bottom whirl got the stalk coming up the top whirl and you can see this one had at one time three flowers at the end of those little points that's all that's left these ones are runners they're they're running plants they they shoot out roots then a new plant pops up, shoot out roots, new plant. That's how they spread in an area so quickly. Uh, but yeah, these these are actually from, from me. I, I found them out in the woods somewhere in the state forest. I took two or three little ones, uh, planted them two years ago, and they turned into covering, I mean, a 10 by 10, maybe 10 by 10 yard, something like that area. Now, this one actually was pretty shallow. That right there, that is it. That's the cucumber root. That's the part you can eat. Uh, you just clean it off. If you're near a brook or something, you can just uh, rinse it off in the stream. But uh, I'll find the other kind now and uh, compare it to this so you can see the differences between the two. This is the edible kind. There's the root. 
So. Well, here's another. This is the other one that looks similar to that one. It usually has three white flowers on the top of this whorl, but usually they only have one whorl, no second stalk coming up to a second whorl. But as I showed you, as I showed you over back there, uh, with with this type right here, sometimes they're not mature and it is just the one whorl of leaves here. So I'll just get this one out. So there it is. What they call these, this is called a tuber. That part right there, that's the tuber. That's the edible part. This has one also. You can see it there. If you broke a lot of these roots away. That's the tuber on this one. This is not edible, this is poisonous. There it is. But I mean, they're pretty similar looking. If you had them side by side, you might not know if you didn't know exactly what it is. I mean, you both have the whorls. If I cut this top part of this off and put them next to each other, I mean, there they are. Someone's, oh yeah, look. But you can see the non edible one has longer and shorter, longer, shorter. That's not always the case. Sometimes they are pretty uniform right across. Um, the tubers are usually smaller on the, the, the non-edible kind. You can see the edible kind, it gets just right away, it gets really fat. And uh, yeah, so that's that. I mean, there's a third plant that's over here that looks a lot like it too it's this one right here see this one's got got the whorls of leaves on it too but it's actually got more than it's got these random ones down here then a whorl then a whorl but these ones get a lot taller see they get like this right on across I mean, these ones don't have much of a tuber on the bottom, it's just pretty much a root. So, you probably wouldn't confuse that with it, but you could. I mean, if you didn't know what you were doing, again, don't eat anything out here if you don't know what it is. Uh, so this is the edible kind. I'm going to eat this in a bit. Well, here it is. I cleaned it all off. Um, you just break off the end of that and that part's edible and it really does ironically it tastes exactly like a cucumber and it tastes so good mm, I love those things so the same out of all the wild edible plants that you come across so far that's one of my favorites they really do taste good and here's another one that I've mentioned a few times in my videos that you can do several things with there are a lot of plants that look like it it's another runner, meaning that, again, it uh, pops up a plant, shoots roots off, pops up another plant. And uh, it's the wintergreen, which is right there. It's just got these dark leaves, dark green leaves, with the light-colored veins on them. And this time of the year, they're flowering. Here's one of the flowers. I'll pull it off. This is one of the flowers. You can see it's hollow in there. Shaped like a bell almost. Shaped like a little bell. And there's the back side of it. Now, when these are in season, which is winter time, they have uh, bright red berries that uh, have a star sort of like the sort of like the blueberries but a little bit different they have a little point in the middle or a little like 
stem that sticks out of the middle of that star and they're bigger than blueberries. Each plant, these plants here, each one of them only has uh, usually two or three berries per plant but you can do so many things with these. You take the leaves, here's one of the leaves. You can see these have tiny little uh, teeth on them. They're not completely smooth. From a distance you'd think they were smooth, but they're not. Uh, and right away, you can taste the wintergreen in it. So you can eat the berries in the winter time. You can eat the leaves any time of year or chew on them. Get the flavor out. And um, the uh, leaves make great tea too. So, so if you chew them up or steep them in water, like I do. I have a little uh, anodized aluminum cook set that's got a little pot and a little pan on the top that cover each other up. <laughs> I usually use the pot to, to boil in and the pan as my cup. And uh, if you put, put those leaves in, put in uh, these white pine pine needles, I'll show you those right now. That's another wild edible here in southern New England. Right there, these are white pines. This tree right here. There's several things you can do with these. Uh, if you, the cambium layer, which is the, the part in between the outer bark and the heartwood in the middle. If you just take a pocket knife, cut a square, peel it off, it'll be a, a, a whitish layer. I've showed that in one of my videos too. Uh, that's edible. It doesn't taste very good. It's kind of woody, but you can eat it. It's got uh, starches in it. Same tree, white pine. The needles here. You can take them any time of year. It's better in the spring when they're they're new shoots, but you can just pull the uh, pull the clumps of needles off, throw them in your tea, steep it with the winter green, and just leave them both in there. So that's two different things you can use for the tea. I sometimes throw the berries in too, crush them up a little bit, throw them in, let the flavor get in there. But these. These white pines are really high in vitamin C, so that's another one that's good for you if you're out and about and or stuck out somewhere and you need to, uh, I mean, obviously you're not going to go to the grocery store and get yourself some orange juice, but that's a way to keep yourself healthy until you get found if you get lost somewhere. Uh, let's see what other stuff I can come across out here. Here's, a, here's another wild edible plant that I have mentioned in my videos before, but since I'm making one specifically for uh, wild edibles, I figure I'd reiterate on it. It's this right here, reindeer moss. You can see how it looks. It's, a, it's actually not a fungus, it's a, it's a lichen din. And, uh, and you obviously want to clean the pine needles and stuff out of it. But if you boil it in water, because uh, it's kind of bitter, um, that'll take some of that bitterness out, and it's high in starches, but you usually find it in damp areas, mossy areas. Um, it comes up quick, so sometimes after a, a rain it'll come up right here. You can see the, the patch of it. It's all over here, there, right out here. So it's growing right in this moss, and... Uh, Moss actually has another benefit too. If you get the right kind, this kind is is not the right kind right here. This looks like little pine trees, but there's a kind that's thicker. Um, that thicker kind that's shorter and, and looks like a sponge almost. You could actually get water out of that uh, that's clean to drink if you just squeeze it. But again, this is the reindeer moss. Another interesting fact about that stuff, uh, you have to know your stuff like anything, like we had talked about on other videos. These can be deadly, you have no idea unless you really know what's what, but um, unlike mushrooms, lichens, uh, something like 
80 or 90 percent of them are edible, but there are that there, there is that 20 percent that that is not edible and could make you sick or kill you. So you have to know what's what. But you have a better shot with lichens than you do with any kind of mushrooms. Okay. Here's another wild edible. Doesn't look like much. Uh, it's actually not that outside. This is the bark from a white pine. This right here is a white pine. You can tell that here's the whole tree right here. You just take a, take a layer of the bark off down to the, the heartwood here, but not it don't wring the tree out because that'll kill it. If you take a slim piece, uh, it can heal up from that. And it's not the it's not the outside here that, that is edible, it's what's called the cambium layer. See this is the outside bark. There's the cambium layer. You can see right there in the video how it's split up. And this outside part should just peel right off. So now it's just that. That there. Yeah. Now they're really chewy. It's happy, but usually this is a kind of a, a winter thing in the winter time when you can't get any other food that'll give you some things, starches and stuff. And also, I mean, this isn't really an edible, but since you consume it, it's the same in the same category, I guess. The, the needles, I've said this many times in my videos from White Pine Tear, uh, steep them, make tea. You just have to pull them off the best stuff to make to make the uh, tea out of is the newer stuff at the end because the tree's pushing most of its nutrients to those parts so you get a lot of vitamin C out of that white pine here and uh, spruce spruce needle same thing you can get a lot of it out of that too and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie to you the uh, the cambium part of of the bark there tastes like shit <laughs> but It'll uh, it'll keep you going at least somewhat if you're looking to get rescued or something. It's not the kind of thing if you're backpacking and you brought your mountain house meals that you're going to be eating. But if you're out there in a survival situation, it's a way to get something in you. I mean, people that have been in those kinds of situations, uh, it, it's amazing what you turn to after you, you've been hungry for a while. So it's there. You just have to find a way to get it. If you don't have a knife, you can... Uh, flint map like uh, I did and make rocks into into sharp edges so you can cut things like that but just out and about in a different area I know I already showed this one on my uh, earlier scene but again wild cucumber root I just I love these things they taste so good exactly like a cucumber they're just covering floor over here. There, there, there. Believe it or not, all these little things, that's all them right there. Yeah, they're all over the place out here. And they are so good. That's what you call putting your money where your mouth is.